future. So uh, if, if now we move to the corporate world, uh, Florent, Florent Drillon, you're in charge of uh, sustainability services at Capgemini. And uh, when, when you talk to your clients, are they all thinking, as we heard before, you know, like um, 10 years back, I had on my agenda digital, five years ago, sustainability, and now geop ge geopolitical uncertainties. That really resonates and sounds like constraints. Are they all looking at sustainability and circular economy as a constraint? Thank you, Lucia, for this uh, very uh, accurate question. Uh, indeed, we discuss a lot with uh, all our uh, executive clients and uh, circular economy has been on around for quite some time. It's not a new concept, but uh, we are still stagnated at around 9% of circularity in the material that are injected back in the economy today. Uh, and thus, there are a lot of incentives, as you mentioned, the sustainability imperative, clearly. We heard a lot of very uh, interesting discussion this morning also about the geopolitical pressure and the lack or the difficulty to, asso to access to materials, uh, which raises a lot of new questions regarding sovereignty. Uh, the price of lithium has gone up and the price of batteries using lithium has gone up this year for the first time in a decade. So uh, it's, it's, it would be time to increase uh, circularity. The difficulty when you compare it to the digital transformation is that digital transformation was adopted faster, first by addressing customer. Sustainability and circularity, the difficulty to put it in place, and, uh, uh, and that also explains why it's so slow, is that you have to rethink completely your business model and your operating model and your supply chain. And that's uh, exactly what the executive tell us. We recently did a report on circularity, and 70% of the executive we, we uh, address tell us it's complicated. Uh, the reason why circularity is not enforced massively, scaled up, except at innovative uh, companies like uh, we, we, we see today, is the scale of the transformation that is required. The lack of incentive. Uh, financially, some companies still see that it takes more time to have a return on investment on circularity project than traditional project. And uh, the, the lack of skills and capability to uh, implement those. Uh, the good news, uh, if, if I may so, say so, is that we have more and more uh, triggers to go toward more circularity. The first one is the, circular, uh, the, the sustainability imperative. Uh, we've had great examples of how using circular, uh, using a biomimicry uh, principle, regenerative principle, can reduce GHG emission. But it is also seen as a, for 50% of the executive we, we interrogated as a source of cost reduction. And uh, as well, there is a lot of innovation that enables uh, circularity. Bio, bio, uh, biotechnology, synthetic uh, biology clearly is one of them, as well as the convergence between the physical world and the digital world. A lot of the circular uh, economy principles were just principles and were not really easy to implement in the past beyond uh, burning waste uh, to produce uh, heat or, or energy. Now, with uh, the uh, development of a lot of new uh, technology and the fact that everything is connected, you are able to uh, develop circularity. For instance, uh, the, the emergence of platforms that enable you to go toward uh, more uh, sharing economy. Uh, you know, instead of selling car, you sell uh, the access to a car. That's what we see with uh, uh, companies which are uh, enabling car sharing, for instance. But as well as the traceability, which is, has been seen as a major issue to enable circularity. And we have now, uh, somebody mentioned uh, a cryptocurrency, but the technology behind it can also be used for traceability reason and also to enable what is difficult today, which is the reverse logistic principle. So being able to trace your product down to their usage uh, point, but also organize the new supply chain and gather them back to be reassembled, refurbished, and reused. So technology is clearly a level and an innovation that will help us accelerate the move to our circular economy. That, that's interesting. Thank, thank you, Florent. And um, th there is an interesting link to be made between uh, the shift to uh, circular economy and our ability to go faster on the energy transition. I, I believe uh, you've done a recent survey for France 
that tells a lot around that. Can you give us a little bit yeah. more insight? Yes, so we, we worked with the French uh, National Institute for Circular Economy, and the ask was, uh, given the constraints we have on uh, resources uh, due to the different crises that we discussed today, but also due to the ambitious target that we have uh, to reach the decarbonization of our economy, is it sustainable? I mean, you mentioned the planetary boundaries. Uh, clearly, uh, we've been burning, uh, I think, around 1.7 er 1 Earths in usage of material. Uh, if everybody was living like France or UK, that would be 2.6. Uh, so th there's clearly a need to go toward more circularity. I think around 100 billion tons of material are used every year. So that's uh, four or five, almost five times more than uh, during the period of the clover from in 1972. So that's clearly not sustainable. And the study we did was to show how to enable the energy transition, leveraging circularity principle, which are uh, uh, avoid, uh, reuse, replace, uh, and, and uh, refurbish. And uh, what we found is that applying all these levers would enable to, uh, su to, uh, to unlock 70% of the need of material and minerals that are needed to produce the equipment that are, uh, in, uh, that are required for the energy transition, like the sonar panels, the batteries, the electric cars, et cetera, et cetera. And that could lead to reducing, uh, and that the figure is close to what you were saying, uh, around 40% of the GHG emissions. So circular economy is not uh, nice to have, I believe, in the, in the journey toward energy transition and sustainability. It's really a must. Uh, but it, it means also changing the, the mindset and seeing beyond uh, uh, just uh, uh, recycling, but opening to new business models, such as shared economy, and also going back to uh, sustainable product design, so thinking a product right from the start that is not only performant, which is what companies have been doing for years, delivering a very performant product, but delivering a product that is resilient and then can be used in other value chain, in other, uh, in other uh, uh, industries.